All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to bring Lisa over there, over here, and kick off the meeting. She, she might. Have, she's there. been trying to come because she wasn't sure she had the right one. All yeah. right. Once she pops up, just let me know. She might be there now. Nope. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, March 28th. Uh, we're in the Jordan Conference Room with members of SBAC, our design team and owners rep as well. Um, busy agenda, busy day for SBAC. Uh, we're going to approve minutes. Uh, we're going to talk more with Bruce about the upcoming survey. Uh, we're going to discuss the insert that we want to include with the survey. We're going to discuss the forum format. Uh, the forum's on April 4th at 6 p.m. and then other communication efforts. So we have a lot to do um, and a very busy day ahead of us. So I'm going to try to keep us efficient and effective and ensure everyone has a voice. Um, and we may reach points where we don't have consensus, but we may need to move forward anyway because uh, we have a lot to figure out today. So um, as soon as Lisa pops up, let me know. Um, but uh, talking about, uh, let's do minutes first. Can I have a motion on the 321 minutes? Motion to approve 321 minutes. Second. Okay. Everyone in favor? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Emily, for doing such a great job on those. All right, um, a new draft uh, of the survey has been included in the materials, but instead of diving into the questions first, we have some kind of big picture stuff to figure out. Um, I put them up here to help guide me in facilitating, but also to let you know what we need to figure out, um, at least in my mind. Um, Emily, I'm gonna have you speak on this, uh, but we have to figure out timing when the survey goes out and can we push the date we'll get to that in a minute we have to talk about are we going to include a web version that we talked about last week are we going to send it to each household or are you voter rolls i know there's various opinions on that to discuss uh, we want to figure out um, with bruce what the liberals we're looking for at the end of this uh what's the cost based on the above and then we'll get to the questions to include so some some big topics um but uh important so Emily, if you can. Um, I will you, say, so the timing, this? this is an agenda item that Lisa wants to bring up tonight. Right. And so she is prepared to speak on it then. I'm not entirely, okay. my understanding is that there's concerns about ability to turn around sure. the cost on the next round. If we add, because we've already pushed out a week and we were adding a week. Sure. So Earlier. I know originally we were aiming for May 2nd for the SBAC to vote. And originally um, before that. But if the survey is not, can people hear? I don't know. Okay, I can't. No, I meant. So what was said? Because it's all in that direction. Sorry. <laughs> so the question is can we move from 5 2 to 5 9 for SBAC to make our final vote? I know. The reason we want to do that is because the <clears> survey. <throat> Have time for us to get the survey results to impact our decision making. Can we circle back to this because this will yeah. be out of time. Yeah, we can. So that's a big thing for us in terms of timing, but we can get back to it. So I'll speak this way, Ken. Um, so last week we talked about including a web version. Um, there's a lot of discussion on it. Um, so we advocated for it. Uh, Bruce, you did it before. Is it possible to do again? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, are we in general consensus that we want to, if we move ahead with the survey, then we include a web or can Michael? Can we? I want to make sure everyone understands what that what that means because the the reason maybe the maybe the reason is there was some confusion is the intention for this was to have every registered voter have the ability to answer at once, right? And they would have a serial code on every single um, survey that went out in the mail. The way we can include a web version is they just take that serial number they receive in the mail and put it in the web and um, off they go. And they can take it web or they can take it by paper. Um, but we, the plan, as far as I understand it, is still to send it to each individual that is eligible to vote and um, they can, but they have to still receive it in the mail. 
Yeah. So we'll get to that question in a second. Bruce. Right. So the whole web thing is all tied to what database we use to mail to and everything. The reason why we were able to get away with the property list last time is because we had plenty of time to put post the, the web survey on various town uh, websites so people could get to it that way. Um, we had QR codes all over town. We had paper surveys at the town hall, the library, the community center. We don't have that luxury now. So the only, only way that we can get to all voters is through the voter registration list. And then what we do is we'll have a code on the paper survey that gets mailed to people. They will have to enter that code to get into the web survey. This is all to avoid duplication, which, which is, and, and I'll just be perfectly honest, it, it doesn't do anybody any good to send duplicate surveys because then it identifies a proposal that the whole community you won't come to a community consensus on. So you have that decision as to whether you want to have that level of security or not. I mean, it really does a disservice to this whole process for people to quote unquote, load the box with duplicate surveys. Just right. I, I, I haven't gone this rabbit hole yet, but I, I will have some questions. Yeah. Before we get into voter registration list or household, let's just make sure we're all on the same page with a web version. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I think we are. We got a version. So let's definitely let's a web version for that. Now, yeah. I, I just have some comments. I have to leave at 9 a.m. Yeah, so I apologize for that. I have an appointment that I couldn't change. I just wanted to offer a few comments. First of all, I think it's very important that we mail to every voter because that gives us a maximum capacity to deliver our message in the in the insert so that every voter will have that. And I believe that that message is going to be comprehensive and provide the kind of information that we've all wanted to get out to the public. So that's number one. Um, to, to just send it to households, you're just going to end up with a mismatch, an uncertain sample, and so forth. This will give us the maximum sample. The other point I want to make, and just to add to this, um, Bruce, is that the number that would be on each of these surveys is going to be anonymous. So no one should be concerned that it would somehow track, you know, their particular survey and it would prevent duplication and so forth. And I really strongly believe this is the necessary way to do it. I know it costs a couple thousand more dollars than it would to mail the assessors list, but the value of getting that information out to everybody who's eligible to vote, I think is well worth that expense. Um, and then if there's any issues about this going forward, uh, once I leave here, I just want to make clear that I believe Bruce has put together a good um, draft survey here. Um, I, I basically feel this is, you know, uh, sufficient and complete. I believe we've proved this in, in the past and the issue was to clarify whether we were going to do um, both the online survey and the paper survey. And I just have a couple of observations to make. One is that Bruce, I, I still am somewhat concerned about the nomenclature for the designs. And what I'd suggest as some type of create a lot of confusion over nomenclature is to go with B, C, and E and, and drop the drop the B plus, drop the C minus. Those have, you know, some negative implications, either positive or negative. I think it gets rid of that implication. Yeah. And that we can still use, you know, D, C, and E with, with the subsets. Instead of E9, M7, yeah. AK2, M. Right, yes. Yeah. So, so I, just, <laughs> I, just think, I just think it would simplify. And as Lisa said in our last discussion, you know, she was concerned likewise about that confusion. And I don't think we want that. And I don't think we want the survey to drive a complete renaming of the three options yeah. we've already settled on. That, that are based on, on alpha characters. And we can use the subset as we go forward. In fact, we may end up with a with an E, you know, three plus or, or B plus plus or whatever we decide, but nonetheless, we should keep this thread, I think, consistent, and that'll give us uh, the best results. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to suggest, and I know we had a couple of suggestions online, is that we should consider having a drop box here in town office for those that want to deliver their questionnaire um, and avoid using the mail. And it probably should be inside, not outside. So it would be available only during 
working hours during the four days a week that the that the town office is open. But I think there'll be those that might figure that, well, it's late, maybe it's too late to get it in, they can drop it off. Or they might be going here to pay taxes or register a car and bring it in. So if the staff at, at the town hall could accommodate that, maybe use an old ballot box, you know, that has a lock on it just to maintain security and then have Bruce pick it up periodically if you can do that, Bruce. I know if, if I can talk about Dropbox next. You can, but I try and I want to get back on the agenda. Um, so anything you want to say about that, and then I want to get back to the voter rolls versus house. We have a Dropbox out front. Um, folks use it, uh, but over the next couple of weeks, it's uh, it's really occupied because taxes are due April 16th. Right. And so I would just be, my only concern is that people would throw that in with their property taxes and uh, I would want to see it. Uh, I would want to see any get lost or caught in the sauce. Also, that whole kind of volume to what is one of the most important of the two days of the year, that we, uh, two periods of the year that we process just the payments. All right, thanks. Um, but we could, we may be able to find an, another way to accommodate that. Too. Okay. So, um, you just don't want Bruce to get all the tax payments. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine with me. I Bruce, you don't pay money. Okay. We're 14 million coming in over the next two weeks. <laughs> Thanks. Well Thanks, Larry, uh, for sharing that, uh, all that feedback. So let's go back to the question on voter rolls versus households. I know there's opinions across the board on that. Matt, I'm going to turn to you as town manager to get your insights on that, and then we can hear from everybody that has an opinion, because I know there's varied opinions here. Sure, sure. Go ahead, Matt. You know, and I, and I sent an email yesterday just trying to clarify some of the concerns that uh, – that we have from the from the staffing side of it, and then we're not denominational. Whichever what people decide they want to do as a procedure, we can find a way to make it work um, through that. Um, some concerns that Debbie had raised with me about uh, voter list is it's you know it's about seven eight hundred people, and there there's issues regarding the accuracy of it because the state doesn't encourage it. We do have the inactives that should take about a thousand people off that, but still. There's a bunch of people between that gap who may be inactive or may have not be voted in town anymore. So the veracity of that list versus say our assessor database is not this is not there's not the same level of confidence in that. And that's why people usually use the assessor's database versus the voter rolls. And I kind of I tried to explain that as, as best as I could. Michael, the um when I spoke to the the um to the state. Yeah. And, Scott King is his name, and I think it's 8,800 you have here in town, but about a thousand of those people are, are gone or probably don't live here anymore. Um, my understanding is Scott is willing to provide the most recent, which I think is up to date as of December or January. Um, which is about a thousand people less. So right. we have, we also don't have seven eight hundred voters in the town. Get those back up. Okay. That that I know. Yeah. What do you think the number is? Probably close to seven thousand. It's probably in the mid, yeah maybe in the mid sixes. Okay. No, the low sixes. Well, that's what that's the number of people that show up. Is it? Is it no, that's that's we we voted about a ninety plus percent clip. Right. And we'll we for sure in November. Okay. Uh, and probably last November, right? But. The 2020 number would actually kind of give if you want to know what a number really looks like, that's probably about as close as you're going to get to a protected real number. Um, so there's probably, it could be as much as a couple thousand plus. In there. So that, just thinking about that. Um, yeah. And as I said yesterday, the, uh, the assessor badge is updated monthly. And so if something bounces back, they correct that as well. So just, you know, the two different databases. My, my question on the assessor's database, um, even in case of my home, I don't know why, but it only says my name, even though my wife and I both own it. Would that, what would that mean? I'm sure there's other. Yeah, there's, I mean, there, there are trusts that own properties. Trust. Yeah. You know, there's, so, so that's. You know what I mean? But that's right. That happens. Like, Bangor won't tell me about my own mortgage because Brandon signed it first. Right. So he's on the. The town only has name. my name for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Um, it may be. <clears throat> Yeah, like our, I property has, I can talk. our property has. Our property has four Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes it depends upon the deed. Usually, it's how you have the owner of the record, how right. 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 yeah. that is. And sometimes they just grab the one owner one name versus well, like you have owner one, owner two, address one, address two, 
city states that you know all those different common delimited things that we that we can pluck out of there. Yeah. Um, so sometimes folks just use the 101. Uh, they just choose that as their direction. So if you have 101 and 102, sometimes I'll have it. Um, um, I mean, I managed it for 17 years. So if I had you know Michael Hussey and Sarah Hussey as both names, I would have that 101 and 102 there, okay. and then. Sometimes you run out of space if there are multiple, you know, like what Penny was saying with, with George yeah. Bond, we have Penny, Cam, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it won't include that list, won't include renters and it won't include mm -hmm. dependents that are of voting age. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, the, that's the that's the that's the challenge for sure yeah. on that side of it. Um, the other the, the other thing to consider and uh, uh, more political. And just as a practical pitfall that you may want to just, just keep on your radar, you know, choose one way or the other is a uh, voter list or sensitive, as you as you notice, because people are, you know, they're sensitive about voter lists and people are, especially, you know, post 2020 and in advance of 24, uh, people are uh, touchy about voter lists and, right. and their, you know, ability to track them. And, and I know a couple of them. I'm not impugning and, and not meaning to. I don't want someone to try to impugn the character of this committee or Bruce because I, I can. I mean, I know it's completely legitimate and it sounds like not, but people run a mile with that sometimes. You mm -hmm. just got to consider, consider that if you can avoid it by using the assessment database. Matt, Matt, just one observation on that. I, I did research the um, the statewide voter list um, and the provision that provides for governmental use, which is what we qualify under the. Ms. McKinney indicated does not provide the enrollment and party information on the list. So that information is not actually provided on that list that will be received by, uh, by the foreign research group. No, no, agree. And that's, uh, that's why I said I'm not I'm non, non partisan on that. Just on right. Part. It's strictly non partisan. It shows voting district address of each voter. Okay, just so we keep things in order here and everyone gets a chance to speak, I heard Penny, you want to say something, then I'm going to go to Corinne online, and then who else wants to say something? And I'll go right down the road here. All right, Penny, and then Corinne, and then David. Okay. I'm going to sound like a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, but I will tell you so many false narratives can get put out there about a voter list that we're going to be touching at this point in time. And I'm just going to throw that out there. And it, it goes to some of when the council talked about budget on a week or so ago, we talked about updating that list. And we were cautious about doing it before November mm -hmm. because we didn't want any implications about what might be happening to that list before November. So I'll put that over there. Um, I that is my primary concern. Um, my next concern is the number, the number of um, of of surveys we'll be sending out and what are the cost implications. And I think it's more than a few thousand dollars. I, I really think we're heading up toward about 40 something thousand dollars, but that's just doing my like math. Um, the other thing is, is that when we say that, do we want it to be open to um, um, uh, scrutiny if there is no code associated with it, we can't tie, make tightness, uh, we didn't do it the last time, and we had um, statements amongst the SBAC team that said we had credible, valid um, um, information from those from those surveys. I'm not a surveyor. I'm just going based on what I heard people say, and I believe the people who said that, and I still believe. It. Um, I I just say if we believed it then why can't we believe it now? The other thing is is that when I hear code um, and how will that code be assigned uh, and determined? Because if we can create a code to go on each survey with voter registration, then we can create a code to go on any number of surveys and so we'll we will know whether somebody duplicated something and created more surveys um so i'm going back to my primary concern is 
too much work going on on the rotor list at this point in time. If we felt information was valid the first time around, we should have the same level of confidence this time around. We should look at how we did it the first time and try to replicate it. Uh, and ultimately, we have to think about cost. And, and if we are getting more, then we, whatever approach we use, if we we received 1600 the last time, this, this proposal is based on 1000 We can't say that we're only accepting 1000 We've got to accept however many we get, I would think. And so any uh, proposal should be based on at least 1600 because we know that that's what we can probably um, get. So thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. We're gonna go Corinne and right down the road. Good morning, Corinne. Good morning. Um, I guess my comment picks up on the end of Penny's comment, which is that you know, our last survey, I think Bruce felt very pleased with um how close our survey results were to the actual demographics of the town. Um, and so I wonder, maybe this is a direct question for Bruce. Is there a reason that we can't, again, you know, we only very slightly had to stretch the data um, by, you know, previous votes and demographics to get a pretty accurate match? Is there a reason that we can't do that again this time and feel confident about it? Bruce? Um, well, I mean, we, we got that uh, level of response, the 1,652, because the survey was open for six weeks or seven weeks, and we had all other kinds of initiatives to try to encourage people to respond. And we just don't have that time. I mean, we're even talking about stretching going from May 2nd to May 9th as being difficult. But you've got so, energy, you got energy behind it. It's built like this. So even with a short period of time, everybody's waiting for it. We'll get a lot of good response. We'll get a thousand response. Let's just yeah. Let's so just make sure everyone gets. I, I just I, I, we we may get the same level of response. I just want to put that cautionary right. statement out there because it, it's so different the length of time that the survey will be. Yeah. Thanks. Well, what about the other question that Karen had about um, using the last method versus um, considering voter file this time? Do you have a thought on that? I defer to your. Well, I mean, the last survey we checked the uh, the um, I just lost the the, 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 IP. the IP code, yeah. and we compared. So we we bumped all the IP codes together. Um, we only found in sixteen hundred surveys, we found maybe nine duplicates. Um, so with the web survey, if we do have a web survey available, if a household gets one survey, it's easier for them to. Then if they have four voters in the household to get four surveys. But again, we have to be careful. We also be careful with duplication because we did have a handful. Again, it was only a handful of surveys where we bumped up the responses and we found um, about another handful, maybe six or ten surveys where the open ends were exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we to catch this. Thanks, Bruce. David, thank you for going down the road. It was the answer to the question. Thank you. Cindy. Yeah, so I, um, <laughs> same comments that, that we've heard, you know, the voter, using the voter roll, I'm concerned about the number of, I mean, I'm one of those four voter households, so we would get four surveys, so there's a lot of additional cost. Um, I also, um, Bruce, I do remember you, what, what you just told us. There was very little concern about duplication in the last one, and you were able to weed out the ones that seem suspect. Um, and then I also want to go back to something you mentioned earlier. You, you felt like with the web survey, um, you know, we had time to post it on websites and, and put QR codes around town. I, I don't understand why we don't have that time now. I mean, we can, we just have to put the, the link to it. The website's going to be there. It's a matter of updating our website, getting town and school website to post it, and getting some flyers around town. I don't understand why the, that there's a time constraint. 
um, do Isn't that. it more on the back end, getting the not having enough time to analyze the results? I think we'll have plenty of time to promote it. But we need to give people proper time. There's spring break. People need enough time to actually take it. We want to have every. It's one reason we want the web survey, right? We want people on spring break to be able to take it. Right, which is exactly what I'm saying. Where, but I guess what what Bruce was saying is the reason to use the voter list and send out an individual QR code or or, or individual code for the surveys to each home. Is that we wouldn't uh, have time to vote it through, but so maybe I misunderstood what you said earlier. Um, how would someone who's taking the survey online access the survey? Is my question. Well, it, I, I, again, I, I'm just giving you information, okay? I mean, we can make different approaches work. I heard a lot of concern at the January meeting and since about the security of the survey about people duplicating surveys. So I came up with the idea and we talked about this of having a code where that people have to enter the code. Now my approach to survey research is that the respondent is doing us a huge favor by taking the time to give us their opinions. Right. So you wanna make it as easy as possible for those people to participate and having to enter a code People just type wrong and they just get frustrated. And if they don't enter it right, then they, they get kicked out. Um, all I'm saying is that we have a much shorter window to have the survey live. And do, you know, it all comes down to do, do we want to kick off the launch? What we did last time is we, we held the web survey back until people got the paper survey because that's where the information is. We don't want people to fill out the web survey until they see the insert because that's kind of the crux of this whole thing. So we have to hold back the web survey until people get the paper in their house. So that shortens our window. We can do all those things, but it's only going to be live for a handful of days as opposed to six weeks. That, that's what I'm saying. All right, Cindy, and then we're going to. All right. Is there a way, though, on the web survey form just to put a link to? pop open the, you know, before you answer this question, view this link, and then we pop up the, whatever our insert is, so they can see that virtually, and then they proceed with their questions. And the more aggressive. You can certainly can do that. Well, we can certainly do that, right. It, it puts the onus on the person to actually do it. Right, but even before they can see the, the survey, way. they have to look at it's it. It's sort of the same way with the paper survey, yeah. Go ahead. So I was gonna say okay. something more aggressive and say that the link to the online survey, she just opened the insert with a link to the survey on the insert rather than the other way around because people aren't going to click a link, but if you force them to open the insert, then they are more likely to read it. Um, I guess I would echo Cindy's comments about, I mean, your comment. I'm really, I'm echoing Bruce's comments. We want people to take the survey, and the harder you make it, the less people will take the survey. Codes, that are tied to addresses, all of this just adds a burden onto the, the person that's gonna make it less likely for them to take it. I think in particular, when you're getting a code in the mail that you have to take physical custody of and retain so that you, when you're logging into the online survey, you need to make sure that you have a piece of paper so that you can enter the code. This is a bigger hurdle for ease than I think mo most people think of. Like, I mean, I. This is something I would struggle with in my house, and I'm not, I'm a pretty competent, engaged person, but finding that piece of paper could, could delay me. Um, I think if we had had any signs that the previous survey had been gained to a significant extent, that the conversation would be different, but we don't. We have everybody, it seems that that did not happen. And so I, I do not understand why we would add substantial cost to the project and substantial effort to the survey takers to prevent something that didn't happen before. And I guess a sub comment is a lot of these things, I have to say, I feel like we keep saying we discussed them at previous meetings, like how people were concerned about the, the, the gamification of the survey and how we definitely decided it was going to be mailed out and not online and how it was definitely going to be sent to all voters. 
and I've been coming to all these meetings, and I don't feel like I remember all these things being discussed. So I, if there's decisions that are happening, anyway, I feel like there's been a fuzzy line between where these decisions are being made. They seem to be being made, but I don't think they're being made here, all of them. We're here today, though, so yeah. it's important. We're all giving feedback and we can make decisions today together. Patrick. All right. Um, I just want to, I just want to, I think we should do it just like the last survey. It seems easier. Um, I was actually, I brought my son to his first Boy Scout meeting last week, and I actually love how people just come up to you and talk to you. I actually had a brand new 18 year old that was very excited about voting for the schools as a senior in high school. Um, that was there. And he actually asked, how do I, he heard about the survey and he was worried that he wasn't on the yet, mm -hmm. but was able to vote. So he, he was a little bit, I, I told him, I was like, go register to vote and see if we can get you some. Um, my, only my only concern is I do think that we probably should wait till the mailers get there because I can tell you for people probably 50 and under, they're going to do the survey on this. And if you don't have something that size, you're not going to be able to really understand the full scope. You're just going to be like, you know, you know, people kind of thumb through it and they're like, oh, I can't see it on my phone. I'm just going to vote. So I guess that would be my only suggestion is maybe wait for the mailer to show up to people's houses because they will do it on their phone while, um, you know, the kids after the kids go to bed at eight. So. So I think we've gone around the horn, um, and there are a few that advocate for voter rolls. There are more that advocated for doing it like last time. That's kind of what I heard, but we can continue to discuss. Right, Cindy's there. Like, I'm going to go to Cindy in the morning. I just one one point I also wanted to make is I have a concern too about you know one of the things we want to see in the survey is movement from the prior survey. How sure. much people learned about the schools? What you know? How much would they support now versus then? And if we're sending it to a different audience, we don't have valid data to see how we can move people because we're looking at a different sample. Go ahead. Actually, I should respond to that. It's there is a, a, a little bit to say about that, but really what you want to look at is what your respondent sample looks like. And is that congruent to what you had before? That's where you can really tell if you can compare the results. So what you don't want to have happen is um, one thing that was incredibly surprising about the summer survey is when we weighted the data to align it to the way people voted in the November 2022 um, referendum, we didn't have to use very big weights, which means most of the weights were very close to one. So we didn't have to shift you know, the emphasis of respondents based on how they voted very much. It does become a problem if all of a sudden we have nobody in the survey who voted no in the referendum, or if we had nobody in the survey who voted yes in the referendum, that's when we're gonna to start to have an issue. If we have to start using weights around, let's say uh, magnitudes of five or something like that, then, you know, you start, shifting the, and you're, that's a bad word, because you're not shifting the results, you're just emphasizing some respondents and de-emphasizing other respondents, so that you have a sample of respondents that reflects how people voted in November 2022. So that, that's where the, the it, it's really the respondent base that we get back that you can tell, okay, how good can we, what's the goodness of fit of these two samples? So, thanks. Sorry, I was a little worried. <laughs> okay. Like, so my, my, my question is, with the um, assessor's database, do you happen to know how many individuals are on that? There's roughly 4,400 records. That's going to have... Um, Some of those records have more than one name. Most have more than one name. Yeah. Yeah, so it would be my recommendation to use that, if we use that, I'm fine with it. So I still think there's value, even if it's an extra couple thousand dollars, to send more than one per household. People are more likely to, it's an education piece. Look, this is, as much as this is about collecting information, it's fundamentally important. Getting the word out there that these are the problems, these are the options, and here's how option one, two, three, 
forgetting the letters, uh, <laughs> seek to address those. So if we can get 10% more people to in town to see it because it's addressed to them rather than the household, I would I think that would be a worthy investment. And the only other question I have is there any way um, a couple people that rent in town had approached me after the previous survey. Um, wondering why they didn't get anything in the mail. Is there any way for us to reach renters in town that you're aware of? One uh, we don't have individual renters' addresses. Um, we have the location, and we'll know we can know the number of units that are there. Let's say, like Woodland, uh, Woodland Apartments comes to mind. You know, let's say there are 60 units there, uh, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the biggest, isn't it? That's, that's probably, yeah, that's largest. And then the second would be uh, uh, senior housing on, on Scott Dyer Road. Uh, yeah. uh, is that or, a way that we can, I mean, is there a way that we can have paper copies printed in places like the library or, uh, uh, or it, it's a if it's an apartment building in the apartment building or something along the line. We know the numbers. We can just send resident a, unit. Yeah, what? resident a unit, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you got to figure we have. Why don't we send it to every address in case? Because we have. Go ahead, Bruce. 12 apartments. So, so the last time we put paper surveys at Town Hall, the Thomas Memorial Library, the Community Center, all three of those places. Debbie Lane at the town hall had by far the most activity. I don't even know if a survey got taken at the community center or at Thomas Moore Library. Yeah, I think, I think here's, oh, your, good here's point. your best. I mean, good point. Just to look at your calendar, Dave, if you had it here and knowing the volume of folks who come through uh, in the course of the month, either A, you know, the first half of April, because they're coming in, they yeah. probably got exposed. Yeah. Second half of April, folks registered a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us registered actually in April. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably your best distribution point would be right there. Mm -hmm. And our yeah. staff is super happy to, to direct folks to grab that on that side of it. Right. And, and I just wanted to add to, to Caitlin's, I mean, it would be easy to put a pile of surveys at the landing. I'm sure they would be fine with that. I, I, I mean, I've worked with them before. I'm, well, I'm not working. My, my mom was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but getting a place like the Woodlands or some of those privately owned apartment complexes, I don't know if they would allow anything or not. We have to ask that question. Yeah, I, think, I think we could just mail, like the manager said, we could just mail a survey to each unit. He doesn't actually have to have a name attached. We just go, we know how many units there are. We know what the unit numbers are. So get it into the Excel, the mailing list that you're going to send to the printers, the apartment one, we can capture with lens, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. We just have to manually add those. In. Yeah, and just do resident unit, yeah, yeah. unit blank, uh, 60 women or whatever, or whatever number that is over there. We, 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 yeah, does somebody have the capabilities to do that? We can probably, we can probably, I mean, because it's so. <laughs> Sorry, there's so few. Yeah, we could we could populate that and just generate you know generate that side of it. Um, I think. Yeah. Um, so Michael and then Cindy, I think. Well, that's it like, feels like we're coming to consensus on the assessor database, but I was curious about um, one mailing per household versus each individual plus renters. Can I ask a question on that? Yeah, just and, and probably a first question. I like, said. No, I'm not actually sure it's a first question. <laughs> Is there a way to qualify it on the survey uh, that you can say number of, uh, and, the, and the question is probably already there, number of residents in your household? And then by that, if you knew that, uh, could you qualify that and say, well, if you knew three came from this IP address that, that, and they said there were three, but that's probably a bear to cross, cross check. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have number of people in the household. In the survey, okay. take away the number. Of well, you could see the <laughs> answers. Are the exact same. Yeah, partners. Um, answers. Yeah, in using the assessor's lift, is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <Just talking stuff. laughs> in using the assessor's list last time, um, you know there were there were a number of out of state addresses, and there is a lot of duplication. Um, because people own more than one property in Cape Elizabeth. So we ended up, 
I mean, if you go back to the deck that I presented, we we actually ended up mailing to 3,874. Right. Yeah, that so right. I, I don't know. I'm really up in the air about, quite frankly, about sending more than one survey to a household. I think it just kind of increases costs and kind of complicates. We, we can't really tell from the assessor's list and that, unless there's owner one and owner two, Clearly, DeMarc, and I, I forget how my house is listed because we have two owners. Um, so it just, <laughs> this isn't a technical term, but it just gets kind of messy. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> so, maybe, as, maybe as a footnote, you put additional copies in case people only want to do the paper survey, there's additional copies available down the hall. Like well, yeah, that's what we did in the, in the cover letter last time. Yeah, Cindy, do you have something? And then I think we have general consensus to move on from this topic. Yeah, no, my thought was on uh, when we're sending the ones to the apartments where it's saying to resident, and I think we had talked about something before having, is it possible to put something on the outside of the envelope that really indicates what it is, that so it doesn't look like junk mail? Um, yeah, so we can put a tagline. Okay. On the outside, we considered um, immediate response requested mm -hmm. or something like that. I know. I mean, yeah, I just put that on things too. Right. But just say what it is. Cape Elizabeth. Can it say in the envelope? Can it okay. say Town of Cape Elizabeth so they know it's official? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we have. It's a town. It's a. That's the uh, uh, return address up in the corner. Okay. So all have. right. So yeah. So we have that. Um. All right. And then. Yeah, sending more than one per household, I don't, um, I, I would agree, it, it gets messy. And I know that if I got two identical things, one addressed to me, one my husband, one's going to go on the recycle bin before he goes upstairs, because I know all of this needs to be it. Uh, so he did owner one and owner one or two, they should both be identified on the other. Uh, yeah. So I just confirmed that on that. Yeah. I was just going to ask if, uh, we put, or it can be in the cover or it can be a little card in with the inserts and everything that says we recognize there are multiple people in the household, um, you know, they can use online to complete uh, this survey. Yeah, I think we said something to that effect last time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I can resurrect that later. <laughs> okay, so I think we have consensus on using the assessor list figuring out rental units and getting addresses for those, um, having paper copies here at Town Hall. Um, we probably could put some at the library too, that doesn't hurt. Bruce, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Is there any way that we could um, have time to meet the courier deadline, to put the link, the URL or QR code? I know it's probably not built yet, but the, but the URL could be built so that when the courier gets sent out in two weeks, there's a link to it in there. I mean, you're right, the survey's open for a, a smaller period of time. People are on spring break. I think that if, if we need to, I mean, I'm all about wallpapering the town and information and we- Why put it on the website? We'll refer to the website. I'm a little nervous about timing, like if- Timing is tough. I mean, in timing in terms of, People seeing that before they see the mail or anything like that. I just, I well, we can put in the courier look that the mail and look on the website for a link to the survey. Right. Yeah. Look, keep an eye on your mail because yeah. we want them to open that mail and review yes. the information first. So I think that's what we should focus on. You're not saying it's part of the app that we're already producing. No. Right. You're saying no. separate. I was like, yeah. Separate. Just no. to tell. The okay. Person. No, I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was we'll send a press yeah. release in the courier. Like, I on that topic. No, I just want to like, 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 like as we know, the courier is the most red vehicle in town. So we want, it seems like putting a link to it in the most red vehicle in town would be the best way to get the highest response. I think the other thing that can be effective too is just that the town does these little public notices, like when they post an RFP and they have a position of your city. And you could have a public notice about the survey. I think we did that last time. Yep. Uh, okay, thank you for that conversation. Um, so we have a decision there. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the top, which was a timing question. Lisa, are you out there? Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? We're doing great. We're doing Good. great. Um, 
spending a little little bit of time together. Um, so <laughs> the question, Lisa, is um, with the survey timing, we want to give enough time to have people fill it out. We have school vacation coming as well. Uh, SBAC was originally going to vote on May 2nd to select an option. SBAC in our conversation last week at communications was thinking we'd like more time. Could we extend or change that date to 5-9 for SBAC to vote, knowing there's implications for your design work? Um, we'll probably discuss that further tonight. Um, mm -hmm. But to help guide our decision making today, is there anything you can tell us about the implications there? Is that possible? So the implications are um, essentially we on the 16th um, of May have a meeting with the SBAC uh, to update you on the selected design. And then we have to turn it around to our estimators the next day in order to be ready for the planned forum on June 6th. That's not adequate time to develop the selected design. It's by the time you guys decide, we have less than a week to design it and then put it into a PowerPoint to turn around and present. Could so we... we would need to slide everything out a week in regards to the meetings. So the schedule would mean that every meeting and therefore the forum would need to slide out one week if that vote is slid from the second to the ninth to provide time to um, do everything. Penny, go ahead. Um, I, I understand what you're saying, Lisa, and I assume that everything would start to ripple. Um, I think uh, it's imperative if we are going with a survey that we have this amount of time in order to, um, to allow residents to be able to uh, answer it, get them in, and us to take a look at them. So. Uh, from my opinion, and this is Penny's opinion, that uh, to do anything else except move it out um, says that then the survey becomes moot at this point. I think we have to move it. Patrick, I and David, I think this probably needs to get pushed out to the committee tonight, but my feeling is if we push it out to the night, we have to give our architects at least till the 23rd. To do the final they, it's a whole ripple through. It, it can't. Have, it can't be the next week because we there's have, there's not enough. I don't even know how they're going to do it. Two weeks. But my point is, it's a that, it's a challenge. We we noted the last time that the schedules moved out, and it's moved out many times at this point. That that was that was the final. We can't do any more, and that's condensed as it is. So if it doesn't move, we can't accomplish what you're requesting us to on the time provided. So if we slide it out, it's still condensed. I don't want to think that we have ample time. It is very condensed. If we put you out on to the 23rd, would that give you enough time? That would give you, if we did it on the 9th, that would give you a full two weeks. Um, it's, still, it's still condensed. I mean, we're going to do everything yeah. we can like we have in the past to meet it. Um, but I just want people to know that it is still a condensed schedule. Um, but we can't Pushing it out would give us what we were planning to do previously when we moved the schedule last time, giving us two weeks so versus one. So my question is, should we should we push it out to the 30th? This number is going to be, once we finally find this one, that number is going to be the most important. I want to give you guys time to design and be able to work with your estimators. I don't want I don't want you guys to be rushed because I as we all know, we rush, we make, we make, we will make a mistake. So if we push it out to the 30th, that gives you a full three weeks. Is that would that work? I, I guess what I'm saying is everything needs to push out. Exactly. If we just push that meeting out, then we condense it on the other side. So there's there's a ripple effect of if we if you vote on the ninth, then we can't meet with the SBAC until the 23rd to update you because at that right. point that's less than two weeks for us to take whatever feedback you give us and and it's going to depend on the design. If it's hey we really like this one and it's a minor edit, may, you know adequate time if we are taking and combining three of these options into something new that's a, a lot of time so mo moving it it's not just that meeting it's everything it's the forum yeah. it's everything moves out a week yeah we thank you lisa david then michael this one's for you lisa with the mm -hmm. tight schedule that you got for estimating you know i've done a lot of estimating myself so if i don't have answers or i don't have pricing back i put it into my contingency do you see putting more contingency in your price 
because you don't have at, enough time. At, at this stage, with a final option that you're going to referendum, we want to be as solid as we can. Okay. This is the number that people are going to be voting on. So oh. we want to make sure that we're working very closely. There will be contingencies. There's always is at this stage, um, to your to your point. It's a valid one. But this is the final option, and this is the number that will go to voters. So this is what we will be locked into for years to come. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. So the ultimate uh, bottleneck, or it's more a question of the town, because there's a certain drop-dead date where the town, in order to get it on the ballot, mm -hmm. needs that information. The school board so, can vote at the end of July, right. and the town council mm -hmm. can vote mm -hmm. in mid-August. So mm -hmm. that, to me, is the big question is, does that need to be pushed down? And if it does, is that okay by, by the town? We got some wiggle room over okay. on the back. We have no more slack in this plan after we make this. We get that. We, we can do it. Good. And, Good. Yeah. and uh, Matt felt comfortable as well Good. when we looked at it. So I think we just have to issue some jobs. I think what we do is okay. The night, then we cast the plan. Yeah. Let's see where we have to dig our things at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, or I mean, uh, August, mm -hmm. and put it in place. Recognize we have no more wiggle room at all. So Lisa, Lisa working on one, not seven or yeah. three. So sorry. Yeah. No, Lisa, not all of SPAC is here this morning, so we'll have to kind of get a form more yeah. formal consensus tonight. But I think we're all leaning the people here. To shifting to five nine for SPAC to vote and uh, pushing the rest of the schedule. So okay, so we'll, can... what we'll do for tonight is update a slide showing what the implications are of that in regards to all the dates moving out one week, um, and then we can talk through if there's any challenges in that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can we someday have Kate Elizabeth School in your background, please? <laughs> once I once I have it rendered, yes. <laughs> That's nice. All right, once we so have a final option, Penny, for sure. <laughs> we figured out timing. Um, we decided about including the web version. We figured out sending out based on the assessors list. Um, now we're down to deliverables for Bruce. Um, last time there was a report and a slide deck. Um, well, the slide deck was the report, I think, Bruce. But what do we want from Portland Research Group this time um, with the short turnaround? Um, thoughts on that? We want a proposal at half price. Yes. Right. Yes. We'll get to the we'll cost in a minute. Um, but Cindy, go ahead. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think most important is the data. Um, and I was looking at some of the I don't know if Bruce heard that. I, I think thing. most important is getting the data and the, the, the kind of the just the summary of the data itself and where there was additional like analysis and recommendations. Um, I think this committee can kind of take the data and, and do that work. I think that's kind of our job, especially now given what we know about the projects and stuff. So um, I was looking at the, I'm trying to look for that section um, in your report first. So um, it said, you know, your reports include the following section, background, research objectives, methodology, um, you know, key findings, detailed findings, which I'm assuming are your, um, the, the charts and the graphs that you proposed with it, that, that you were in the prior one. But then when we get to um, conclusions and recommendations, I would suggest that um, the committee uses the data um, and we do the analysis for um, conclusions and determine how to move forward. I'm not sure I understand. Yeah. Can you restate that? So I guess what I'm saying is, and, and maybe we just go back to the prior report. So Bruce would provide kind of the report that summarizes the objectives of the survey and how that is conducted. He provide the findings here in the graphic format like he did, but we wouldn't have at the end the conclusions and basically recommendations for what to do with the data because that would be the committee's work to analyze the data we receive and determine our next steps. So ASPAC would analyze the data that Bruce would provide. 
rather than relying on Bruce to provide us analysis. But right. Because that, we're, is that and, what you're saying? Yeah, because I feel like we're the experts in the project and the school design and stuff. So, and I think we need to apply that expertise. And like one, you know, one example is, you know, someone who may not be as familiar about the project, I keep going back to the cafeteria, where the survey data came back and said that cafeteria isn't important. Yeah, we have the expertise and experience to know some cafeteria is a very important thing. And so we apply that rather than having, um, I guess, the recommendations. Um, I, I think we take the data, we need the data, but then we apply our knowledge of the, the project and how we use that data going forward. Mike? Well, I certainly agree that it's up to us to apply the results. And I think the cafeteria is probably a good example. I think, I think based on, especially based on the proposals we've made, um, including B, the cafeteria is of utmost importance. However, I don't I still don't really understand. Still have to summarize the results, and then it's up to us. I don't think Bruce should be making recommendations if that's what you're getting at, but Bruce still needs to summarize the results. Right, and, and I mean, that's what we're getting through the graphs and the, the findings and things here. I think we do get the, sum, the summary there. I'm not saying what something's are you wrong in the spreadsheet. What do, you, what do you specifically don't want to see? I, I just don't want to see something that's proposing conclusions and actions based on the data. I think we need to review the data and have our own conclusion and determine our own actions based on the data. It, what do you think um, of that, Bruce? It's totally up to you. I mean, my concern is that you use the data properly, but if you're, you're, you're purchasing the project, so it's really up to you. What we provided last time is we provided a report, a detailed report with a narrative on the charts to give you some guidance as to how to read the charts. Mm -hmm. And then the, this deck that we keep referring to, this is actually the presentation deck that I drew from the report, I and mean, is that the kind? Of, and, and we can just do the same thing if you want, just not have key findings and recommendations if that's what you want. I don't think we should have recommendations. I think we should have key findings. Yeah. 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 Okay. Everyone agree with that? I see all bullet, the heads bullet point, yes. bullet point key findings similar yeah. to yeah okay. yeah it, okay. it gives us the trigger points to start okay. going Corinne are you okay with that if you're out yes, there yes yeah sounds great thank you okay so all members here agree with that approach so you go yeah so we're going to do a, a, a report with narrative and then extract a presentation yes okay yeah, and no conclusions, right? Got no, no recommendations. No right. conclusions. All right, Bruce, you're going to be on the spot, and if you can't do it right now, we definitely want to know as soon as you can. Based on all these, <laughs> we figured out what's what's going to be the cost um, for us when you're thinking about putting this together, sending it out. Um, having it return to you, doing the analysis. So, because we have an insert, so what I'm looking at for the mail, you know, what, what's been making this difficult is kind of nailing down what the contents of the mailer is going to be and how many we're going to actually mail out. Okay, so we've, we've reduced the number of mailings considerably by going with the assessor list versus the other, I, I, I still have a handle on that, but one of the key differences here is that last time we were able to send things out and it weighed an ounce. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a key number. Because we have two four-sided documents going out um, and a BR, we, we have to send a postage paid envelope. If you don't send a postage paid envelope, you won't get any paper service back. A total of four pages, total front and back. You mean the survey and the answer? No, no, no. It's the survey pages. is four pages. But yeah. it's two pages printed front and back. No, it's four. No, or four. Oh, sorry. Four. No, yeah. It, it's, it's an 11 by 17 fold and a half. Okay. And we've got two of those because we have the survey and the insert. Yeah. It's, thank you. It's not, it's not printed on both sides. Well, it is, but, but we have four sides here. 
Yeah, so that's two total pieces of paper, though. And then the two, insert is also two, two 11 by 17, so not two eight and a half by yes, yes, they're, yes, they're yes. oversized. So they are oversized, but it's two. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. So it's, it's, it's essentially four sheets of paper because it's 11 by 17. Correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 So okay. you're saying the key. So so we've gone over we've, we've got over the one ounce. So what? Got over the one ounce, which adds 24 cents yeah. per yeah. piece just to mail out. Which are post -age. Post -age. For postage. So did you calculate that? Oh, we just changed the number of mailers. Well, yeah, but okay. So yeah, so I, 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 I 24 cents times 5,000 is 1,200. Yeah, so. Thank you. Does this the mailbag envelope yeah. have to be that too, or can that be a regular? It's a number nine. It's a number nine, and it's an ounce coming back. So the way that a BRE works is you have uh, you have to pay the postage. You know, you have to pay the first class postage plus a handling fee for each piece. So each piece coming back, uh, it was like it's it's like up to a buck sixty or something like that. And the problem with the you know we could say we're only going to process a thousand or seven hundred and fifty or five hundred surveys, but if we get two thousand surveys back, we got to pay return postage on everything. Yeah. You can't just say. We don't want that. Let's take them back. They, you know, everything that. Right. That's the assumption we have to make. Yeah, yeah. That's so I've I've been making it that we'll uh, I've been making the assumption that we'll get a twenty percent return, which is about what we got last time. That's good. So I I don't have an exact number, but I I don't think we're going to be far off from last time. Oops. Far off from what? From, from, no, no, no. From what the budget was, I, I think we're going to be in the mid thirties. Okay. For the project, mid thirties. Yeah, and, and that's including going over an ounce. Yeah, because we think the insert is really important. All that includes processing. A, how many surveys yeah. process? So that. Thank you. So, yeah. So yeah, we're, so we're going to be in the mid for the processing a thousand surveys. Okay. Um, it doesn't actually change too much if you go from five hundred to seven fifty to a thousand because the big time costs. Are mailing everything out. You've got a four-sided color piece, which is a lot more expensive to print than a four-sided black and white piece. The renderings have to be color for people to understand them. Um, and you've got that postage paid coming back, which is about a third of the surveys that we got. Well, it was almost exactly a third last time. We got 550 paper surveys last time and 1,102 web surveys. Mm -hmm. um, so it includes it includes programming the web survey, having the web survey live and, and hosted, and it includes the processing. And, and I've got it, it three options, either processing 500, 750, or 1,000. Um, obviously, the larger number that you process, uh, the, the, the tighter the margin of error is for the whole sample. You can also have more flexibility to have meaningful drill down analyses. You know, like if you want to look at just the people who voted in favor of the referendum or just the people. So all that's included. Mm -hmm. So we just said we're not going to have a drop off on the front or anything. We can't really do that, right? Because of the voting. Uh, okay, we will. Matt okay. said there was a workaround. Okay, we could figure out. Yeah. Well, um, last time they just dropped them off with Debbie Lane. Yeah, and she was fine with that. My work, Cindy. So, just going back to, I, I still want to understand. I mean, you, you listed the components, but how do those numbers break down? We've got the additional, you know, each return piece. You're saying postage is a dollar sixty on each return piece. Yeah, don't quote me on that. That's but, off the top. I mean, roughly, you know, and then the cost for mailing the, let's say it's two ounces, uh, cost for mailing that. For mailing it out. Yeah, like per piece, roughly. I know you said it adds an extra twenty four cents, but what's the base rate? I don't know. The first class is like sixty eight cents now. Like that. Okay, so roughly dollar. I, I don't have that detail because because we haven't finalized how much no, how we were mailing, and and also I, I I don't have a final say on what the contents is going to be. Like, are we going to have a separate cover letter, or are we going to try to jig it into the insert? My understanding was part of the insert going to be the cover letter, but that's also a topic for today. <laughs> 
So if we do that, we, we save time and some expense if we have, if we're able to put the addressee on there and use a window envelope as the outer envelope as opposed to laser printing all the envelopes. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, it that also, that? if you have the, it'll be the little cellophane window. So we have to put the name and address in the top right of the um, deliverable of the, Which was well, the, it's letter, be, of the letter. Well, it's got to be done more towards the center because well, it's the way it folds. Is, yeah, well, no, yeah, there's a template yeah. we need to use to work with the specific right. um, envelope. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So as we have a little more discussion today about the insert, do you have enough time today, Bruce, to turn around your original proposal and update it with the information and get it back? Yeah. Must find the yeah. The other decision that is key. So having a code cost. <laughs> I, I know this sounds crazy, but for set, when we were at 7,800, just putting that code on added like a thousand bucks because, you know, it's all rigging all the printing. Sure. Stuff. So do we, are we, are we abandoning, abandoning the code? The code. No code? No code. Okay. In my next life, I want to be a code generator. <laughs> uh, so you'll turn around the update the proposal to get it to me and Matt as soon as you can today. Yeah, we'll share it. Okay, okay. great. So we've discussed cost. All right, and it's uh, 20 of 10. We're doing pretty well, team. I know we all have a lot to do today and several more meetings. Um, we're going to move now, Bruce, to questions. Um, I do have paper copies on a chair over there if anyone wants them. Um, We just have a little more words to make the audio. So, do you mind if I take your opening paragraph and cut it out and send you some thoughts? That's fine. That's fine. Yep. Just include others with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's not spend time wordsmithing the top paragraph right exactly. now. Yeah. So Bruce, um, why don't we do what we did last time, kind of go through each question, why is it the way it is, what you were hoping to do, and then we'll come back to the top and answer any questions. Sound good? Yep. All right. So the first page is probably the page that's changed the most. So I heard that um, we wanted to get another read on where people were in terms of of uh, um, kind of understanding what the situation is. So that's the reason for question one. Um, what do people think about the school buildings as they exist now in terms of creating an excellent learning environment? And I, I was trying to come up with a basis for what to rate the schools. And I thought that uh, an excellent learning environment was more appropriate than just saying the shape of the buildings because the shape of the buildings is a little more vague and people could think of just the mechanics whereas i think some of the proposals are also updating learning environments technology and so forth so that's that's why i use that we are seeing questions yeah. after we go through it all yeah we'll go through the whole thing we'll go through the whole thing back. okay then the second question is um Again, assessing the perceived importance of all the building outcomes. These are the things that were presented in the press release. I took it directly from all those elements I took directly from that press release. Great. Uh, then, uh, then we get into looking at the individual conceptual designs. I mean, I can change those. I'll change those back to B, C, and E. Are we okay with that? I think uh, he's yeah. right on the mark. Yeah. I agree. You can't I agree. change the. I would say not put them in B, C, E order. Yeah, it's fine. You yeah. don't have to be yeah. on yeah. order when we put them on. I think it's imperative not to use the C minus C plus. No yeah. pluses. So what we talked about in the last meeting was saying modified concept B, modified concept C, yes. modified concept E. Is that still that was an agenda? But we're not going to call it modified here. 
So what are we, so I'm, what I'm are using conceptual design. Like We've got to use this label in the insert. We have to make it easy piece. Can it's got to be more on program. Right, so I need to know what to call it in the insert and the presentation and the app. I think in the presentation, it's fine to refer to them as mod, in my opinion here, but like for simplicity for this, B for the insert, B, C, E. Concept, B. Concept is fine. I don't want to speak for everyone here, but I, 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 I like it. I'm fine. That's fine with me. Okay. I know I'm so, not okay, but I do think that they're ranked by a letter. And that the, the letter order is going to convey preference to an extent. We will what if refer. We do C, D? I'm just reordering the letters doesn't necessarily like change the fact that that is the case. So, so in the paper survey, obviously you can't randomize them. In the web survey, they'll be randomized. So when people pull up the web survey, they won't always get kind of. Conceptual design E first. They won't always get They'll always be called. But in, in they will be called those. Yeah. People are going to see there's a price, right? Difference yes. for BCE. And we're going to note in the letter the process by which we got to these three. We're going to remind people that we started at seven. It's part of the opportunity, right? So for transparency's sake, we started with seven options. The SBAC narrowed it to three. They're just the letters. Yeah. And I mean, what's that? I'm just thinking, even if they are randomized, they're going to have the handout for all three exactly. of them in front of them anyway. Right. So, yeah. did you have a question, Emily? I was just going to say, when you, when you specify that we started with seven options, you should say A through F. Correct. Correct. So that you can see that the letters. The committee narrowed it to these three. I also I feel like it would be beneficial if we're going to do this to. Uh, you know, like Tim has spoken many times about how A and G were simply data points, uh, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it is also true that they are data points and they're important data points. And I think particularly for the people taking the survey, they're important data points because specifically the cost of G is very different than what people might commonly understand the cost of G to be considering the last referendum. And I think that the cover letter or something we issue has to say what the cost of what A was and what the cost of A was, because that's essentially what our baseline is. And that isn't anywhere. People shouldn't think that the alternative is zero. The alternative is a $40 million repair. And I also think that people need to understand that G now costs $180 million and not $116 million to put E in context. I think having the A and G data points somewhere in our education materials is an extremely important thing. So I think getting we'll get to that. I think that's Sorry. a good no, it's a good point. <laughs> good point. It's a good point. Uh, we will get the cover letter and what's in there, what isn't in there. I just want to finish this first. Yeah, so, I'm sorry. I just noticed that I didn't update some skip patterns. So, C, please explain the reasons for the response to private Q8. Obviously, it's Q9. Okay. Sorry, so, I apologize for that. Um, so, this is uh, this is a, this is the same question that um, presented last week. Uh, I think it's extremely important for the hierarchy of what people are are really honing in on to have this question. Um, Q11, I kept in whether or not people have actually reviewed any information that the school board advisory committee has put out there, no offense. Um, and if they have, how they rated it. Um, question 13, again, is the same question we used in the summer survey. Then there was discussion last week about a question uh, as to whether or not people understood the recent revaluation of their property. So this is a way to get at that. And then we have the uh, demographics. You can see that the way people voted in November is now the first classification question. So that's been moved back from being the first question. And I took out the question about how many months during the year people live live in Cape Elizabeth. I also, in order to make things fit, had to pull out the additional comments at the bottom. People will, if people really have more <coughs> stuff that they want to say, they have insert a sheet of paper. We, we received several full sheets of paper last time. 
<laughs> just, just a quick slight edit here through pre, pre K. Oh, pre K. Pre K through four. Yeah. Is that P R E hyphen K? Yeah. And is it Can capital P? Usually lower case, but. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you for reviewing those. Let's go back to the top. Uh, and again, we're doing really well at this today, but let's try not to popcorn. Uh, let's talk one at a time so people online can hear us and we can hear each other. Cindy, go ahead. All right, question one. Um, one, of my, um, one of my concerns on this is saying, you know, starting out by saying excellent learning environment, I get where you're going there, but I'm, I'm concerned it's giving this impression that we're only looking for the Taj Mahal. Um, and I think when I suggested kind of having this type of question, I saw an opportunity to repeat what was question five in our prior survey, which was to what extent are you, you know, concerned or not concerned at all about the current condition of the school buildings? And then it broke down, I don't know exactly how you, you had it structured in the survey itself, but it did break it down by physical structure and functionality. Um, I think repeating that, you know, in, in saying concerned about the, the condition is coming in at kind of a neutral, and it also helps us, again, measure that, measure where we've moved since September. So I think we're getting different information if we say impression in terms of creating an excellent learning environment. And I go back to what I said before, how do we use that? Mike, let's do not Excellent is a, it implies, um, yeah, I like yeah. to try to neutralize that. I think somebody's right. If possible. We all support repeating So that. did you say go with similar to question five? If possible. Just repeat Q5. Yeah, five. I like that. Yeah, I, I, think, I, didn't know. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now I don't need to make the comment. Yeah. Either. <laughs> Good. Two. Any comments on that, David? I don't know what it is. I don't know if we have it in there, but it's special needs. Anything on special needs, two or three people talking to me about uh, what's important to them. Say that again. Uh, I've had a couple of parents, yeah, parents come up and said, you know, the special needs really important to them. What we mean? What we have is. Special needs is one of the biggest deficits in Hong Kong. So. And it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in this broader detail, it's under C, okay, but yeah. it's not clear here. It's a good okay. point. I, I don't know if there's room for another one. Call but, it out in this sort of adding the facilities for special needs students. I, I think do, including that would be it. I think we can call it out. If there's an M, <laughs> for M, I don't know if there is. <laughs> but I wouldn't put it last. Mm -hmm. It's very important. On the I, list. I yes. Right. So, so this list, there is an order to it for paper. For okay. web, it gets randomized. Okay. okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, adding. Can you say your adequate facilities for special needs program for appropriate 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 facilities? Or you could use the same term, modern facilities for. I guess I'm trying to say it's not even. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I agree. So, with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Appropriate, that again? appropriate facilities yeah. for to, to support program. special education programs. Yes. For I appropriate, like that. appropriate facilities to support special education programs. Yeah. Is, is there a way to get it on one line? And that's what I'm wondering if can some of these others can we. Wait, 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 before we move on, I just want to make sure I've got, because I'm hearing a few things. So I've got adding appropriate facilities for special education, needs, education. Programs. Special education programs. programs. Okay, I'm sorry. Education programs. Yeah. That's his proper name. Penny. Um, the statement before proceeding, should that be up above number two? Say that again. No, which one? The right. statement before proceeding. Should it be up here so they review the material? I thought about that. You thought I thought you thought about that. <laughs> I'm going down and, really not place. Yeah. And I purposely put it below because as much as you can replicate what people are thinking without being educated even more with that piece. I I don't know. I, I just thought it flowed better. 
having it after right before they go into the options. I'm going to shock Bruce and say I agree with him. And I thought this was a good edit. <laughs> because I do think that people can skim over the first paragraph, but by putting it, the first two questions are more gathering information about people's state of mind. Okay. And they haven't answered any questions about the options yet, but okay. they've started taking the survey. Okay. And then they get to that. And that's, that's it. That we want them to see the needs. Before they ideally they would be reviewing one more time what those needs are before answering these and see if I you really them. want them to review what the needs are before they answer. You're right. You're right. I thought I thought if you have if you have this introductory, which you have to have, because some people will not read the cover letter, mm -hmm. and then put the box right right pretty close to it, it's gonna to be too much. I know it's myself that I won't copy. read the cover letter or your paragraph, but I might read this. <laughs> I think that this placement, yes, because this is probably the only place where I would read it. I wasn't I'm going to go to Corinne online and then to Cindy. Okay. Corinne, hi. Yep. Um, I'm really happy that we added all of these questions so that people are really seeing um, all of the needs laid out. Um, the one concern I have relating to um, educating people who may not be paying close attention. You know, we've been working through all of the needs. And I think one of the most important things that Harriman has done is help us start to prioritize those needs. And so um, I think if I were to add one more question, and maybe we can sacrifice, you know, the 18, I think, was the age questions. I would ask something like, which building do you understand to have the most critical needs? Because, um, you know, we we are at a point where we have to start making decisions. And in addition to choosing, you know, B, C, E, there's also the understanding people need to have that we have heard very clearly which buildings have more needs than others. Um, and I just see, you know, comments online and hear the public not understanding, for example, why we got rid of the elementary option or why the high school isn't represented more. So I think it's important that we get this idea across. Maybe we add a statement in our paper, you know, summary saying these are the priorities by school building and then add this question to really get that question in people's mind. Um, which building has the most needs? Thanks. Thanks, Corinne. Michael? I think it's an interesting point, but my understanding is that was option A. These are the critical repairs and needs for all three school buildings. And that goes back to Caitlin's point. Communicating. Well, I could be wrong, but I, that was my understanding of option A. Yeah, yeah. Well, can I no. just give an example? So um, right, when, right. when 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 Colby presented to us, I asked this question. You know, can you rank the schools by need? And they couldn't really differentiate between the elementary and middle school. Um, Harriman has said very clearly multiple times that the middle school has the most critical needs, um, and then the elementary, and then the high school being the last. And I think that's something that we need to start having the public understand. I do think to Corinne's point, one thing that we haven't really talked about how to communicate is how the committee has made decisions. We make them in meetings, but let's be real, the public is not watching our five hour meetings. But the idea that the, the committee has determined that the middle school has the highest need facility like that's an actual determination that the committee has kind of made in coordination with the architects, et cetera. That's not something we need to get people's feedback on. That's something we have we have learned and decided upon as a committee. And I don't think we've done a great job of communicating those types of information and why those things have happened. I'm not, I under, I hear what you're saying. I'm not certain. Well, speaking for myself, I'm not sure. I mean, if it came down to building a new middle school versus elementary school, I felt like going with E instead of F was a representation of you know, the middle school would be smarter 
if we could only do one to do middle school first, but I wouldn't put it in the context of like that. It was clear hearing from uh, last meeting, like the high school has real needs that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And it would be a shame if we didn't. Um, so it's a it's an important topic. I don't think I think getting back to our I don't know how that Sorry. we can it's important. I just don't know how it affects the you know what we need to decide today. Maybe it's a better discussion tonight for, for um, the broader group. I think it's something we need to work on moving forward. I don't know if we do. You can adequately incorporate it in the survey, but I, I do agree. think like communicating the decisions we're making and why we're making them has been a gap. Yeah. Well, yes, no, I agree, but I think, and I, and I wrote to a few community members this week, and I think it was pretty clear why we moved on from option two, at least eight out of 10 moving on because fiscal realities. Not because it wasn't a good, a good, good plan on paper. So getting back to Corinne's, Corinne's request for that type of question, are we, do we want Bruce to work on that? Or where are we at with that? Penny, I saw your hand then. Thanks. Oh, me? Yeah. I like Corinne's suggestion because it's going to give us one more data point, which, it, it, and that data point is that if people, have heard us and they say the middle school is in most need, it helps us as we're formulating what our final option is. Mm -hmm. And then we have a data point that says, here's what we heard. What's the suggestion though? So I thought survey. what Corinne was saying was adding a question that said, which, um, what school, correct me if I'm wrong, Corinne, um, what I heard is that what school is in the most me. Um, well, I, I wonder if that could be accomplished by breaking out question one by school. I think it gets too worried. You're going to be, you're going to, you're running out of real estate. Yeah. I don't have any real estate. Yeah. Okay. There's no more questions. <laughs> we can I add maybe like the line. idea, but yeah, real estate. What are you giving up? Yeah. I mean, if, that, I like if you ask the question in that way, sorry. sorry. If you ask the question the way you described, he will be biased towards the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't make that assumption because I'm not self-serving. <laughs> they have any children. They even want to dispute. Never had ever. <laughs> One thing I was people talk to me about is some people think the grammar school is most important. Some people in middle school. And some people need the high school. Is that a baseline we can use? Can't that's the right word. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. That, but what, about, instead of using the word. Which needs, but what is exactly. more important to you? We asked Corinne what she said. That's what I heard. Corinne, can we go go back to you and you can clarify yeah. what you were trying to say? Uh, so the the statement or the question I had proposed was, which school building do you understand to have the most critical needs? Patrick, did you have a hint? I guess my and then I'm more. I think that you would, especially with the parents, whatever their kid is in is going to have most critical need. Yeah. I guess that I guess that would be my concern. And then recent graduates, you would skew the high school higher. Right. If I if I had a graduate that was in the last five years. And my teenager kept coming home telling me all the problems at the high school. I would check the high school. I think you also get that from uh, older people who may like look back and think yeah. of high school the more. And the, the other the other thing I the other thing I have I mean honestly until the architect kind of started did a very good job presenting to us what was wrong with the schools. I was convinced the elementary school was the worst until I. You know, until we ask the question, what's the worst and why? And she gave a very good answer. Why? What is the worst and you know, why it's the hardest to, to fix? So that was how we kind of ended up where we are. I, I'm, wor I'm worried we're going to kind of go off a path here. Um, I, I understand the question. I think it's not a bad question. I'm worried about the path it might 
sends down at this stage of the game? I think it's important information to convey in our communications yes. and our decision making. I don't know at this stage if it's something we can work into the survey, given the space and time. But, but I think it's a really important point, and I think it's something we want to be really clear about communicating. Mm -hmm. Maybe slide it into the cover letter. Like the committee has yeah. determined that the schools have needs and you can address the order or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they you don't pop out as they yeah. do the narrative to see answers of their rationale. I think when we're there's yeah, general I, consensus not to include it. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was just going to say that I'd be a little bit afraid that the um, opinions of the staff and the various schools would filter into how people rate it their schools, yeah. even though we would be clear that it's a school it building. Of course. Um, all right. Any other? I have a question on Q2. Q2, yep. Uh, so it's in a few places, you'll notice that I, I put in uh, elementary and middle schools, which takes up a lot of space if there's any opportunity um, that I can, that, that, that maybe we don't need that. Uh, I, I, I think for H, you could remove the second line. To serve elementary school? Okay. To serve students. Okay. If you could get that to one line. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, the middle school would have an improved nurse's yeah. office too. It doesn't and do you think people will just know if we say provide separate cafeterias? Do we need to say the elementary? I think you should. Schools? I think that one makes more sense okay. to keep it. Yeah. That's also referring to the to the needs. Okay, I guess, I guess those are the only What about K? What about could you could you say effective environments get rid of learning? I was thinking about something. Yeah. Or effective environments? Yeah. Effective. Yeah. Or just I would say well, effective. I would take out the word effective. I would say learning. For, or just for effective learning. Effective, effective learning. learning. Get rid of environments. Yeah. Okay. So there's two lines back. Yeah. Can you make the logo small? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. No Any other survey <laughs> questions? I thought you were really getting us any. So there was well, one question, and again, this is we may not have real estate for it, but it was something that Patrick had suggested in an earlier meeting, which I thought was good to know. Hold on, when... Cindy. Who's that? question? Uh, no, I was just, I'm, I'm sorry. I was, I'm, no, Cindy I'm, was tactically. That's okay. Yeah, Cindy was raising a question. Yeah. There was a question that Patrick had brought up at a prior meeting that I made a note of, which is when is the last time you were inside one of the schools or have you toured the schools or something like that to get an indication of if they have been in the schools recently? And if I can propose a question to mix, my, my only comment on this is I, question 12, I feel like is, uh, I, I don't know what we're getting at question 12. It's like, we want to know if people have been reading the information. But I mean, giving us some type of qualitative and grade that is vague and non specific is, I don't think, that viable. I have thoughts on one or two. Or can you combine those two and say yes? yes. Yeah. I would rather see something to say what information, if any, have you viewed from the SBAC website, courier ads, meetings, whatever, I would rather like than have you seen it? No. Never, you know, no, but I'm sorry. But I'm just saying, somehow, come on, 11 and 12. Oh, let me see. What do you want it to be? What information about the school building project have you seen? But again, I just go back to my question. How are we going to use this data when we get it? What will we do differently based on the data that comes out of this question? And can we get better data to use? Knowing what they have gotten information about the school building project about is more important than knowing if they're reading our stuff or telling us how good our stuff is. We need to know what they're reading. Does it not, this, this is uh, is it go, Does it go back to that same question that you asked in the first few days, where do you get your information? Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a good, great question. And it guided us. So I don't know if it's worth asking that again, Penny. I'm going to ask a very naive question. Okay. Can we go back to the previous survey and see what those responses were about where people got their information? And I'm going to use a really bad word. 
and make the assumption that that if that's where they get information now, then that's where they get information now. Or do we have to explicitly ask where you get it and wrap it now? I think it's important to understand how we're doing now. I'm not saying we don't understand how we're doing now. Was there an SBAC website before? Yeah. I almost think that what we really want to ask, but the question we really that we really want to ask is have have you learned more about the school building project since you know what you did since that's the real question. But are we gonna get some of that from the first page? We're gonna see if there's different, you know, we can sort of track some of that, you know, understanding of needs. Are we gonna see how people's need perception of the needs have changed? My my concern is that this isn't really actually asking how people's views have changed. This is once again asking them to rank them in importance. Mm -hmm. And I don't hate it because it draws attention to the needs, but I don't think we're going to get anything that new from this. This is going to be a very significant, I think, repeat of what we got the last time because maybe. We're, we're not, maybe you're right, it could be different. I think that what we what we want to know is has the SBA ceased communications helped you understand the school's project better? That's that's what we're trying yes. to figure out. Um, I think that Penny's right. We know where people get their information. I mean, it's the courier. We've had many people tell us this. That's <laughs> and you know, to a lesser extent, the other the other vehicles. So I think your recommendations to change the questions are basically that. I think that at least that gets to what we want out of it, which is have have we helped move the needle, which is what we're actually curious about. How do you think the SCAC is doing, basically, that sort of question? Well, not in general. Just has, has the communication, I like that, has the communication helped you better understand the project? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, something like Has communication yeah. changed your opinions about schools? Yeah. I mean, do you, yeah. Right. How do you feel about your knowledge of the project or something like that? I have a different Versus idea. Thinking. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't, What's your idea? Oh, okay. What if we ask, rather than giving a measurement on our communication, what else do you need to know? Or what information, <laughs> what other information do you need from SBAC in the next few well, people, well, people don't know what they need, though. We need to. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. I think that's a more valuable question than measuring our efficacy of our communication because it's so what i've always liked about question 11 is you have that bucket that says no i haven't read anything but i'm well aware that there's information out there that's a huge learning that means they're not engaged they couldn't care less they know the information's out there but there's nothing that's enticing them to go look at it then you've got no. I'm not aware of the that I'm not aware of the SBAC has provided any information. That's another benchmark that you've put all this stuff out there, and they still aren't engaged. They're still not getting it. But there's, they're going to get it in the mail with alongside. So if well, anyone answers that, then they'll <laughs> <know it. laughs> but although they might not even look at the insert, well. That's, I, 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 so. I just that, that's why I like Q11. And then I don't think it's ever a bad thing to say, well, how are we doing then? I just like, I, I mean, I like we have 12. very little we have very little station. <laughs> like, but 12 is sort of to your point, right? Doesn't 12 sort of get us there? I mean, but 12 is rating our. So first of all, I think that people are going to be a little confused because I don't think, I think that we put out information from Heron that the, the school building advisory committee, have you seen information from the school building advisory committee? Sure. Are people gonna understand yeah. that every letter that, or press release that Chris put out, are they gonna put that all into the SBAC yeah. advisory committee bucket? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Can, can we say 12, could you please read on the overall efficacy of the information they provided? I would rather say, you can't use that to say, <laughs> but I know what you're trying to get at. I would rather ask, has the information the SBAC provided you changed your mind or helped you understand the problem? Or, informed or, or has it altered your impression? Like, is your impression of the school building problems different? 
than it was in November 20, whatever, due to these communications. At least then we're seeing. I think you'd have to say something to the effect that, you know, uh, you have to put some sort of dimension on that. Like, are you now more supportive? Are you less supportive? I don't think it hasn't changed because then you don't know what direction. Well, that's, you know, that's, are you, do you, are you more or less supportive of the school building project based off of the last year of work? I just, I, I, Go ahead. I, I just, I was like, I kind of, I want to know about more about their understanding or how they're feeling about their knowledge of the project versus do they support it or not? Well, yes and yes. I, what I'm really interested in is people voted no yes. before. Well, we're going to learn about a lot from the rest of the survey about what they're thinking, what they're feeling, but are they more likely, based on what the SBAC has provided, to, you know, there, has there been change? Yeah, and the flip yeah. side is what I want to know, because I've become more and more concerned about this in the last six weeks, is have we lost the yeses? Right, absolutely. But don't we get that? This, you know, are, are we getting to that? It has. Yeah. The rest of, not just in a vacuum is, but overall. We have four open ends where people are really going to spout mm -hmm. off on what they like and dislike about mm -hmm. the different conceptual design. What? Where we might get some That's of that. That's what I'm trying mm -hmm. to get at, yeah. Okay. So something like, I mean, I think 11, I don't think we need both 11 and 12. I would say there's probably one question there. Um, could it be something like, um, goes back to what Kate said, is like, maybe has the work or has the work of the SBAC influenced your, influenced your opinion on any the project? Mm -hmm. Or have they, or how is any of these questions actionable? Like what, what question yeah. do we want to ask you that's right. going to change say no, how we right. that? Okay. What does that help us? That's yeah, no, that's that's kind of where I was. Does eleven to help us at all in that in the context group? I think I don't know the. I'm not. I'm, I'm I asking. Don't know. I feel like if, if the question was something like, "What do you need to learn more about right. to 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 vote in a referendum?" and it was state of the school, I don't know, yeah. cost, something like that, at least give us information that we can take action. I mean, you can theme that, and then we could come up with these are the top three things that people want to learn more about, and that can give us targeted. And, yeah, 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 you can't you can't provide responses, because then they raise, people will raise issues that may not have been on top of mind. So the notes that I had on, when I had a prior draft, we started asking, one of, like, what information has been most valuable? What would you like to know more about? What, Sorry. What if it was, do you feel you have adequate information to make a decision on how you want to vote? What if it was that? It sounds good. Do you feel you have at, you have received adequate information from the town of SBAC? I, um, I, I just feel like... More I, informed. Yeah, I would have to say more informed. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't put this in terms of a vote because what they saw is not what they're going to be voting That's on. True too. So I think That's concerned true. about applying. You have adequate. You feel you have adequate information to answer this. Do certain. you feel adequately <laughs> informed about the project so far? Yeah. You feel adequately informed. How informed on a one in ten scale? Yeah, and I think well, that that feel? does give us actual action to act on. Because if people don't feel like they're informed, then we need to. The no voters don't feel informed. I can I can go that. If the no voters don't feel informed, or the yes voters, the previous yes are now are against. Do they feel like I don't know? Okay. Right. I think there's a lot you could get from that. Is what I'm trying. I think that, I think that question is the answer to that question is actionable. Yeah. Yeah. So um, two one to ten scales. Keep twelve and change eleven to a one to ten. On. See, I would do the other. I would keep eleven and change twelve. I could live with I think eleven. I would you, keep you, 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 you're you going to learn if your information is compelling enough that people are actually looking at it. Yeah, I agree. Ready, 12 would be have better. Effectiveness say, and on effect, more on effectiveness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, rather than just overall impressions. Okay, we're getting somewhere. All right, almost 1030 now. Any other survey comments we have not yet? So I'm, I'm sorry, just one question. Yeah. So 12, if, if yeah, effectiveness 12. or more informed? Informed. More informed. 
Okay, thank you, sorry. Um, one quick comment back on two. This is what you were saying, Caitlin, about our city needs. This is how important are the project outcomes to you? So is it, and, and they're saying it's important, but it's, it's, not, it's not giving us an understanding of if they recognize it in a need. This is more about personal importance. Like, you know, they may understand that, you know, the nurses need a better space, but that's not important to them because their kids aren't sick, you know, or something like that. So it, it made, I think, it's giving this personal ranking on something that, that I think the information we need is are we communicating why these things are needs, not, not are these needs important to you personally? Do you understand, like, how, how significant a problem do you think this issue mm -hmm. is in the schools today? Would be a better mm -hmm. measure mm -hmm. on. That's a leading question. I, can I, I, I have to run if I can see. Um, what I think about is if many of these answers are personal. And what we're trying to shift, I think, is. Um, personal feelings to here's what reality is, here's what's going on. I think that this does become, uh, and that's why I asked, do we need the uh, read the materials first so that we are saying base your thinking on facts, data, and logic. Whereas if it's prior to that, it's just truly their impression based on how they feel at that point in time mm -hmm. uh, without any additional data. Right. So I think it's a decision of, do you have people read stuff first, which they might read it first anyway. And but is the goal to find out where we want to target our education? Yeah. And they need to have a better understanding mm -hmm. and they don't currently? Yeah. Yes. Or, so if we go back to similar question, this is similar to question seven from the first one, which was considering various some options or features. Please rate how not important or important you feel it is that the elementary and middle school buildings offer the following features. So it's the importance of the feature versus importance of the project outcome. I don't know if that. I don't get the difference in that. And, and the thing is, people are going to bring their personal interests mm -hmm. to the ballot box. Yes. It's also, that's gonna happen. It's, okay. you know, it's reality. You know, I've had creative directors who think they've had, they've designed the best advertisement that God could ever will upon people, sit in the back of a focus group and I'm out there moderating the focus group and I can almost hear them pounding on the mirror. <laughs> and I'll go back there and they'll say, well, those consumers are wrong. No, they aren't. That's their perception. That's what they're getting. So <laughs> I'm sorry to use that. The, the, I mean, once, I don't know, this might date me, but once FedEx had these ads where they were extremely funny on TV. So the, the ad agency I was working for at the time tried to translate those to a print campaign. It was awful. People didn't get it. And the creative people are going, but, but it's the exact same thing, then they're wrong. So I, I think, I think it's a good discussion, but I think you just have to realize what what people are going to be going to battle box with. So I think back to Penny's point then. If, if we're asking to rate the project outcomes, I think we want them to understand why these things are important to the project, which would put the before proceeding prior to that. I, I just don't think people will read. I think there'll be less chance of people reading all that stuff at once. I think it's I think it's kind of a good exercise to go through the two questions and then all of a sudden, whoa, stop. But I gotta make sure I've read stuff. I think I just come back to feeling like the, the information we get out of two would be more valuable if it was if, like I think that getting people's Understandings of the severities of these issues is more important than getting people's preferences on them. But if they're rating these things as not at all important, then they obviously don't understand the severity of some of the issues. Well, that's not true. Like, I could be somebody who understands the building issues but doesn't think that natural light 
is like. But that's the bias they're bringing to the yeah. vote. That's what that's what we want to learn. And some people may not think that for a white spot important in we're learning. And if we feel like we need to do a better job communicating because too much of the town doesn't understand the importance of the cafeteria or the importance of performing arts, that's <coughs> where we're going to learn where we need to double down. But there's two different issues. It's do you not understand the problems that are happening right now with the cafeterias, or do you not think cafeterias are important? Because prior to being the school, I would have listed separate separate cafeterias as like, why would we prioritize that? Knowing what I know about the incredible impact that has. That's on us though, but to, yeah. to learn from how people are perceiving things and, and, and communicate accordingly. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's just, I think people are what they are. They believe what they believe. We've given them what we can up to this point. They're going to tell us what they believe. And hopefully we've made an impact. All right, we, but you could think that security and safety is really important, but not think. This isn't asking you how. I could think that safety and security is really important, but not think that it's a big issue in the school. But I could think that the schools are secure. So I wouldn't rank it high here. Or do you understand what I'm trying to differentiate? Like safety and security, hugely important, obviously. It's the number one thing I would think about for my kids. But if I believe that the school is secure and there's no security improvements needed, I could artificially rate this in a, incorrectly. I agree, Caitlin. I think it's it's I I don't think asking the question why we're asking it gives helps us gauge their understanding of that need. It's just going to be what they think about that need. But if that's, we have our own impression as a committee and as individuals on the committee of what, how important we think these things are. Right. We want to see how aligned different parts of the town are with our impression, you know, what we've learned and what we've tried to communicate. This is just asking them, where are they today? What, what's their opinion today? It's not whether you, you know, it, we know what the needs are. We've communicated the needs. All right. So we're trying from a standpoint of these are the needs. We want to know where you stand on those yeah. needs because we need to communicate better you know, to, to identify the areas where we need to communicate better. But we're not going to use the data from this in any way to drive our decisions. If somebody says, I don't like separate cafeteria. I think that's up to each member of the committee to, to interpret it how they want. You know, for example, if, if, if it comes back that the cafeteria is not an important issue, mm -hmm. I have a right and I will disagree with that. And I will like to find a way together with the rest of the committee to better articulate that or whatever it is. So it's, it's you know, this, these are data points, yeah. but it's ultimately where do we line up individually and collectively as an as, as the SBAC with the broader opinions of different parts of it. And that's, I mean, that's exactly how I, I hope we would use this data. I don't want to get into the situation similar to the option G situation mm -hmm. where the committee applied their knowledge. We knew, you know, that it was likely a, a price point that was not going to be tolerated. And we, you know, we, we had a lot of good reasons that we knew, but didn't articulate well when we moved on from option G. I would hate to have a survey come back and you know everybody's saying, well, you know, 80% of the people said you don't have to waste your money on improved storage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're they're beating us up because we included a storage room or something well, like that. We still that. have so, to make compromises, right? And we still need we're gonna have to at the margin decide. Even we started engaging that conversation in the last meeting, yeah. uh, where you know, some of us were learning that the Performing arts space in middle school was not what we thought it was yeah. going to be for option G. Okay. And if for some reason it comes back as not, not important at all, that would be for me personally very disappointing. But I'd like to know on the margin if we have to make a choice between an extra 100 seats in the performing arts or better storage. Are we aligned? You know, I do think that this perfect. Well, I think that this conversation though is illustrating the different goals, right? I think you're trying to get a gauge on how the community feels to help us make those decisions at the margins, whereas I would think that this question is an opportunity to see what the knowledge gaps are to both. inform our... It's both. I think it's both. You know what? To your point, and this is this is a takeaway for later, I would like to see a similar question in the future posed to the school staff. Yeah, I agree. 
because we've got to have an understanding Absolutely. of where everybody's at. So Absolutely. to me, um, you know, the community member that may not regularly be in the school or may not even have kids in schools opining on how much storage we need yeah. isn't as relevant as the teachers that are living in it every day. So, so that's why we have this. So I'm, good, I'm good with that. And I think just sort of a parking lot idea is let's figure out how we get this information, even if it's let's not more informal feedback. Okay. Okay. Harriman has had that chance and will again okay. speak to staff right, that's what's driving a lot of the design solutions. Yeah. I think we've dug into this enough for now. I've uh, <laughs> given you a lot of feedback. Yeah. We didn't get to question 14. <laughs> Can I just, what was question do you have to? The, I was just going to I suggest agree. some wordsmithing there. Um, so it currently says, to what extent would you say you understand the recent revaluation of your property? I would suggest. Do you understand the tax impact of the recent revaluation of your property? Because I think just understanding the revaluation, that's the amount. But really, the challenge was the tax impact of that revaluation. I think that the problem with this question in general is that I don't even think that people who I've seen so much misinformation about this that I'm not even confident people who do not understand mm -hmm. the tax impact would know that they don't understand the tax impact. Right. I've seen many people confidently, I don't know. Michael? My, the, the question I personally want to know is not on a one to 10 so much as whatever your impression is, right or wrong, because people may think they understand and they may not. Regardless, in your and right now, does the tax, similar to what we asked last time, does it change your, does it make yes. you more or less likely to support these projects? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a better question. I like that. I like that. That's a better question. Yeah. David, just, this is, I'm not quite sure where it, is, where it says this is not a vote. The question. Um, so nine. Right. Should that be underlined that this is yes. my vote? Because my yes. wife, when she gives me a honey do list, if it's underlined, yeah. I know I better have yes. it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Put it right in the lighting. Who likes to have any thoughts on those words? All right, we're going to color. Any <laughs> other <laughs> survey comments from SBAC menus at this time? Kind of, what's it? Oh, 14. 14 is the test. discussion. Are you on the oh, yeah. oh, it's the same question. All right. Thank you, Bruce. If it's okay, I was going to stay for the insert. I mean, you can definitely tax. Absolutely. So I'm going to get ready. I'm going to be looking at it from the standpoint of people getting it at home and lining up with the survey. And it is 10 30 now. Um, and I certainly have things to do, and you all do too. So let's keep that in mind. So Emily, could you give us an update on yeah. the insert, please? Uh, so, so we have four pages to work with. The first page is a cover letter. One of the things we need to confirm is who is writing the cover letter. And are they sending it to us already formatted, or what is the? I, I drafted the last cover letter for the original survey. I'd be happy to take a stab at it and work through email. And is your intent time. to format it on some sort of letter and I can just pop it in, or what? The same format we had last time, or you need a template? Do we use panel letter? Then? Do we? Sorry, did we use panel letter? Mm -hmm. last time? I, think uh, so, yeah. I think we did. But you need a template if we're going to put it. I need to money. be able to put it in. Can you get that set? Emily can design it on the template, but um, you'd have to get it from the printer. Yeah. I mean, the other option is we just insert it into the PDF that gets printed if you do the formatting on the letterhead. Or we give you the, the final copy, and the, you and the printer design it under the template. It's probably the better way that way the printer is more responsible for it than yeah. anybody else. As long as it's there, I mean, what difference does it make? It just has to be so it can get folded right. Can, can yeah. maybe Chris just bullet point in your head the points, make sure we're on the same page about what we can bend yeah. the letter? Yeah, definitely. Send it to one of your English teachers.
I'm sorry, where did it? Who sent it? I'll send it to everyone a draft. And I think we've been pretty good at working together to, um, I'll try to get that today. Or, you know, but in terms of, am I going to format anything or is, are you going to do all that? So I think if we keep the, the letter short, short, which it should be anyways, um, so we have some flexibility to move things around, then, then I, would, I would think the printer would be able to do that. And this is 9 by 11. Eight and a half by eleven. Eight and a half by eleven. Okay. So then we get to the meat. My understanding was we just wanted to reuse all the the verbiage that we'd used before. So I just kind of I had to reformat to fit it on eight and a half by eleven. Yeah. <laughs> um. What? It's it's ten point font for okay. this text, and this text is I believe it's twelve. Twelve for the headers. It might be thirteen. No, it's twelve. So it's small. I mean, the problem is those ads are basically eleven by seventeen, and this is eight and a half by eleven. Yeah, that works. I mean, it's still a pretty good size when yeah. it's printed. I mean, yeah. ten point font is the, it's lot it's small, but it's the best one. <laughs> It is what it, it is. is. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I like that we have graphics. And I like the consistencies with yeah. our ads and the uh, yeah. 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 So, so then awesome. we get to Thank our you. problem yeah. child. Sorry, if you if you have space in the footer, we could refer them to the website. And that is something I want to bring up on okay. the next two pages as well. Okay. But yeah, Only I because add a little... if you want more detail, go to this link. Yeah. This letter good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna read that. So then we get here. Okay. Now, formerly, and I'm gonna have to zoom out a bit so we can just look at this. Formerly, this all the tax and tax stuff was at the bottom in one line. Yeah. I tried to see if I could do that here again to give us more real estate, and it mm -hmm. will not fit. It goes over by about three to four columns. This is how much space we have to write a blurb summarizing each option. It's like 30 words. That it's said, it's, one to you have a whole other page well, to really go so into those details. So and that's, what if, and I know this puts the needs on the back, but we're talking about a folded 11 by 17. Not for this. Oh, this would be two sheets? This is eight and a half by 11. No, no, it's an eight and a half. It's, it's, an, it's an 11 by 17 right? folded in half. It's so if it's an 11 by 17 folded in half, you could do a folded half. A spread in the middle, although it would put the needs on the back. Yeah. So you have cover letter in front, needs on the back, but then you would have basically a two page spread for your building for this in the yeah. solutions. Oh, I really don't like putting the needs on the back. But that's this is an 11 by so, yeah. so, so, so this is that. what this is the sheet that we're dealing with. So the cover letter goes here, yeah. and then you open it up. You can have a two page spread. Needs and solutions. No, she means to. Well, I was saying this could be because it's so packed in, but it, that then we'd have to have the needs on the. What's on the last page right now? Well, on the back. I have it open because we. It's, the problem so, is, <coughs> it's the what is it solve matrix, which yeah. I have to cut. So why don't you cut up? Oh wait, what does it solve? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm starting to build, but this is. This so is, instead of that, why don't you go up? Can we go back up to the, the big page with the charts? We, we don't need to drive people's attention to this. This is the first thing you're going to be desperately looking for. This can be on the last page and every single person will see it. People will be looking through to see this information. What, That's if, true. what if we moved this to the last page? Because again, I don't think we need to do any advertising on it. People will want to know it. And then Take your what is it solved thing and match it to this. So it's the needs on one oh, side. I like that. Yes. Talks about what it solves, and then all of the financial information is consolidated on the back. But it's, it potentially is less. You duplicate the part of the, the grid potentially saves space. You could potentially be wait, using more space, repeating. Well, you same. don't have to we'll repeat these we, images on the back. Yeah, when we don't need eight point. I mean, it gives us. It's okay to have space. Like people can absorb, you know, and I think maximizing every inch on the page makes it really dense for people. And well, I don't want to waste an opportunity. I, you know, it also creates a very strong narrative concept. You have the needs, this is what's wrong with the schools. You have the concepts, these are what the concepts are and what problems they solve. And then you have the costs, this is not what it costs. Are you so, going to go ahead? 
The problem is, I think what I would have to do is do everything vertical because if we're going to have the the table, basically we need to set up the page like this, do the name of the concept, the graphic beneath it. Yeah, and the, I need to like passing beneath it, and then you're envisioning the description and this whole table. I mean, no, no, no. I think that you need to like. I think that this whole table is a, with all due respect, a uh, uh, full variant. <laughs> this is like. This is way too granular. I disagree. I don't think it's a full well, I think well, it's the I fundamental. Think... It's the fundamentally the most important yeah. part. I think it's that like all that extremely granular important. detail, but it doesn't have to be in a big table. And it just can that go with? Let's say we're doing the center spread. We can write more about each concept, and then the solutions that that concept provides kind of flows over on the right side. But it's maybe not in that. Are you, are you suggesting just a broader one to two paragraphs of text that describe? I think you can you can like sort. you can think about how we're organizing it in a way to be straightforward. But I mean, if we need to say HVAC repairs on every single option, like we're going to be repeating concepts over and over, and we're going to be repeating I mean, like yeah, for each of those it. things. I'm only going to be able to fit with one to two bullets. It's going to be very high level. There's not going to be any of the details. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's even by a whole page to work with, yeah, um, it's gonna be. Yeah, I'm yeah. just envisioning like you put on glass case the way you have it right there. It's gonna be, and I think this happens to me in our meetings, and I'm in the middle of this. Is you're gonna have very similar content. This is and this is one of four pages. Right. <laughs> That's what we need to do is differentiate. Them. We don't need to list everything that a problem solves because we're assuming that all of these options get us to some baseline of competency, like listing out. So we need to confirm that for we need to talk eight. about what how the options are different, not getting into a long list where people have to scan to see what's included in one option versus the other. That's gonna be very scary. difficult for people. I understand, understand what you're getting at, but I'm afraid that if you only even focus on what's different, people aren't gonna understand what you're getting. Also, we could say at the beginning. So up front, all of these options address all the repair. Well, they don't. They're not going to necessarily address all the problem. Thank you. Uh, um, we're taking repairs from option E out of the high school, right? Yeah. That are only in B. Yeah. Are we going to say? So we can say that, like in option E, you can say option E. You know, I'm just like you. You say option E provides a brand new middle school, 100 adjustable needs for the middle school, uh, postpones most pond cone work until we get to a different and. In, in the high school is planned to be in a later bond or or an address through school funds. Creates a plan for future high school right C includes a plan. Substantially for. renovates all the middle school and all of Pond Cove and okay. minimize in in essential high school needs. We, you know, I, I get it, but wouldn't the best way to just have a paragraph of text describing it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and move the financial to the last page. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you can do that. My pitch. And then and then you could even potentially then like the paragraph of text is fine, it's good. And then potentially we've got the other bubble graphic too that shows this this one checks off this checks off safety and security and efficiency and whatever the you know that other graphic that we have on it. Go ahead, Corinne. Um, I would bring up my previous comment that somewhere in here we need to rank the school needs basically um, because I love our needs graphic what are the barriers to existing schools but it doesn't give any weight to anything and I think we've you know that's great to educate the public who hasn't been paying attention but we've moved far past just having everything at the same weight um, so I would say either at the bottom or somewhere on our needs page, or maybe it's in this last page, page that we're looking at ranking and summarizing different the different options. We do need to have one sentence that says, Harriman Architects has determined that middle school has the greatest need followed by the elementary, followed by the high school or something like that. So Corinne, I feel like that needs to maybe be in the cover letter. I I don't know where I'm going to put that on here. Yeah. Also, I don't know that it's possible to do because it's you know there's there's 
there's real needs at the high school and they need to be addressed either now or in the near term. They're, right. as, they're as important, I think, as some of the middle school and elementary school needs. Right. I don't know that we have enough information as the, as the committee to even weigh in definitively on all that. I think what's definitive is if we had to choose between a new middle school and a new elementary school, the middle school and Harriman has identified the middle school has more need, yeah, more needs relative to the elementary school. Well, it's I mean, more yeah. severe needs and less ability to be modified. That's right. Yeah, right. It's older. Right. It's the oldest. That's it's right. less flexible to renovate. Right. It's yeah. So we could just have some handle that. That could be in the cover letter. That's part of why we went with E over F as an example. Right. Right. Exactly. So maybe that's in the cover letter. It's like. Maybe the cover letter includes, and, and for the people who read it at least, mm -hmm. has a paragraph about how we got to these options and why we chose the middle school. Right. We only have about 500 words on that letter, so we're going to be yeah. mindful too, but yeah. we'll do our best. Okay. I think we should try to do our best. On so, that. I want, so can we? Can you tell me one more time what you're envisioning the layout? These tables go to a third page, yeah. and that text gets extended to the full width. So and it's all have, just in like it's a paragraph format. One to two paragraphs. Page. Plain language and overview of the concept that does not get bogged down in overly technical descriptions of buildings. So, yeah, so, so I had then, started to mock up for the ad where I did yeah. have more real estate. Kind so of then, I'm yeah. still working on these. So, so then we could potentially bring this back, this back to the other page. I'd rather have text personally. I don't. We're looking at a two page spread. You well, no, because we want to put the needs first. I thought so. We're back to doing this. So oh, so it's three. needs in this, I think and then finance. Needs. I think it would be needs on the last page. Okay, and yeah, this, yeah. And then about basically, a, a, a yeah. summary set of text that speaks to how option B addresses or does not address those needs, yes. and how option C does or does not address yeah. the needs. Correct. E does or does yeah. not. Now, what you could you could almost do a little pros and cons. Who's which, speaking? Who's speaking? One at a time. So, so if I'm moving the tax and oh, someone's bringing online. I think Lisa was. Lisa, were you talking? No. No, I was not. Uh, uh, so if we move the tax impact to the other page, what do you want to go next to it? So I think we may have, depending on the outcome from the finance meeting tonight, there may be additional metrics that they want to include. And I know one of the things we've talked about including is sort of the long-term cost or the- uh, You're saying, are you saying- So long-term cost. Yes. I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if that's where we include kind of the long-term planning lens. Yes. yes. We have yes. a lot of public comment a lot emailing of and asking about that. I think that's an important thing to try to add. David, I know you I got I got 11 o'clock meeting, but two things, instead of having, you know, all the word and can we put it in bullets? I read the bullet items. Is there room for that? It that adds spacing to it. I can try. Yeah, I'm just saying that, now I'm, that I'm picking up some real estate, it might be. I agree. Yeah. I agree yeah. as well. And why I like the matrix. But I can't promise that I can't fit it all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, if this is going, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. The other thing I mentioned last week, the FY. I tried to do that and it doesn't. Made it too I'm just big. saying, from what I was saying, yeah. we put 2028, 20, 2029. Does that kind of sound like Star Wars? Yeah, is it in? Is it in a. Well, the, the town's fiscal year is not actually a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, just a couple ideas. I don't want to, but if, if this is going to be the, in the inside of an 11 by 17, would you consider using all that real estate and then the back is, is eight and a half by 11? The back page is the cost in some indication of, of longer term That's what net I'm present saying. value. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this will have a lot of real estate. Yeah. This page. No, 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 no. Half, half of it's going to be this page. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Cover I letter D. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Never so mind. it's technically still okay. a little like for So so on the on the back page then are you gonna have anything tonight to show us on it? How you might lay out the, the net present value or the you know the future investments required. Is there an easy way for the public to digest that? Not by tonight. No, no, no. That's, that's not on the agenda for tonight. We're not 
responsible for net present value. So how do we? So how do we do that this week? If this has to go next week, today's finance meeting is talking about the metrics that we're getting from Joe Patera, and he and Matt know that needs to be turned around quickly. Yes. So that will be there. That we'll have that information. Um, the finance meetings today, the information is getting to Joe. So we'll know what metrics we have. We may need to plug numbers in, but you'll at least know what the layout needs to be um, so that we can get those plugged in. Um, you know, we may have a placeholder for the actual number, but we'll know the metric we're getting. Um, the other point I was gonna make on the finance page to, I think, um, I don't know if it's Michael or Kate, one of you said, um, it gives us the opportunity to acknowledge sort of that long-term plan. So like if we look at one that, you know, if we're looking at E to say this, this would include a plan for renovations to the high school in the future or something like that. So mm -hmm. having that, we could do that on the finance page as well. Okay, recognizing it's almost 11, we have members of the public that probably want to say something. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a, we've given them a lot of feedback. We were going to talk about the forum. I think we can, work on that. I'll connect with Cindy and Penny on what that may look like and Lisa. Can I ask one quick last yeah. question? Yeah. The future planning content, are you envisioning that's going to be text? Is there supposed to be, what is that going to look like? What do I need to plan for? I have no idea. I have no idea. And, and will we have it ready within the next Days. Yeah, and maybe that just becomes sort of that that includes the bullets that are going on this concept page what versus on the I mean it can also be high level, I guess it doesn't need necessarily be tied down to really specific numbers. I mean yeah. like there's some of the pieces intuitive. E allows us to have a brand new middle school stretching out the reconstruction of the three schools over over a period of decades. And sets the town up for for you know new buildings on a on a robust schedule. B fixes a lot of problems now, but it's going to result in significant bonds in the not too distant future. You know, C. Okay. So you know, something like that. Yeah. Do you I want mean, to just like, yeah. draft some quick yes, stuff? Yes, I can draft that. We can put it. You know, we can pass it around too. But I think you have that concept, and Mike more on it. Cover letter. But shouldn't that come from? Say, shouldn't would, that come from Harriman? Well, aren't we'll they the ones who know? Look at well, it. Well, we I do mean, have our long term planning slides right, in this right. evening's presentation, which theoretically we can pull bullets from there. Yes, right. That's right. That makes sense. But but try to make them. I just wanted to make sure that was your visioning text yeah. to convey that. Yes. But yes. like, I love you guys, but you guys put a tremendous amount of information. And sometimes when you put more information in, people can't. And yeah. take it like, like, well, and it's hard because different people have different questions they want to answer. Exactly. Like, like, like some yeah. type of simplified, like, right. really, like a sentence or two, like, right. not, not a whole it's, bunch of what's simple is okay, if we invest this, these are the things that we need to consider in the near future as yeah. additional investments. Each, each option, yeah. B, C, and E, have those, yeah, have yes. things that are left we on have, the table. We, we, have, we could got, identify we've those. got to go through this. Meeting. Yeah, have to yeah sorry. No, that's okay. We, do we have people online? Yeah, so forum, I'll connect with people to make sure we have a plan for that and communicate with who we need to. Other communication efforts, we can connect about press release. You're working on a cover letter with me. Forum outreach, we have posters that are going up in A-frame, so I think we're good there. So um, let's go to public comment. Anyone in the room would like to make a public comment? Go ahead, good morning. Good morning, um, U.S. Madison, 270 Fallon Road. Again, thank you for all of your hard work. Continues to be um, a, a tremendous uh, labor of love and um, commitment to our community and our schools. So I really appreciate it. Um, I <clears throat> really, really appreciated the feedback on some of the um, mock-ups that uh, you all just planned out. I loved the idea of kind of this narrative moving through the four pages. I liked that we were kind of expanding it out. Um, I agree with Caitlin um, and Cindy, and actually I think most of you said that the law, the financial information, people will find it. Does it, no matter where it is, people will find it. 
Um, I believe that Harriman had the long-term cost options and the lifespan options already in those bullet points. And Emily, you did point out that those were already included in some information. So I remain hopeful that those will be included in all of our documents going forward. So um, the public can make informed decisions. I think the survey questions, um, that feels like a million hours ago. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if that has any, um, if there's any public input that can um, be heard on this, uh, but uh, the tax question last time provided that um, inaccurate data or bad data, and I uh, still don't really believe it should be part of it. Um, I like that we broke out into monthly costs. I saw that column added, so I appreciate that, um, Emily and Harriman. Um, and I really, really think it's important to know when the public was last in the schools because um, that is a huge component of this because if people were in there 30 years ago, um, they may think there have been improvements <laughs> and there haven't been. So I appreciate um, the time to speak and thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone uh, online, any of our attendees, thank you for attending by the way. Um, anyone want to speak? All right. Well, thank you all for, for attending, uh, the members of SPAC and members of the public. Uh, we're finishing up our communications meeting. We have finance today at 3.30, um, and then our SPAC meeting is at 5.30 tonight. Thank you all very much. Bye. We are